Uh, but when the first started, it, it was going to focus on uh, the Joan Bennett character they brought in. She was a major movie star. They brought her in, and it was going to be a gothic story, and you know, uh, and and it got going, and and it, it it got sort of interesting reviews, and it was it was got a. a a younger audience, which is what they wanted to do, but it, it went on for months, and I don't think, like most shows, it didn't catch on right away. It didn't get its audience. And then maybe about five or six months later, I'm not sure, my memory goes back, they brought on this actor for a 13-week job, and he was going to play a vampire. And people said, the vampire? And it turned out to be Jonathan Frid, who was a a, a very nice Shakespearean trained actor who had a, a, a Canadian from Hamilton, uh, Canada, outside of Toronto, but he had uh, been a member of the of the theater group at Yale University, along with uh, another classmate named Dick Cavett, and. Uh, then he went out and he, he, he was working in the, in the regional theaters as a, as a stage actor and, uh, and had uh, sort of a, a run-of-the-mill career for, for several years until uh, he was hired for this 13-week job on Dark Shadows. And nobody really understood then what might happen. You know, the phenomenon that took place, and it was almost immediate. When he came on the show with his fangs and his cape and his sort of uh, look of mystery and uh, d danger, uh, it immediately caught on with the young audience. Uh, and, uh, and there's also a sexual thing about vampires, which must have had a, a hand in it. But within a few weeks, the audiences really went up. The ratings went up. Uh, and, and ABC realized that they had something unusual here, something unique. Uh, and, and the rest was history for the show. They signed him, I guess, to a long-term long contract, and he became one of the major daytime television stars for a number of years. Jonathan Frid, what can I say? I didn't, I, I wish he'd bitten me more. I never <laughs> got to <laughs> be fully under his, his powers, but he was a real gentleman and very nice to act with and it was very interesting if I recall his character was meant to be a lot more sinister um, when he came on the show but I think his uh, his innate sweetness I think shone through and also his um, uh, anxiety about not knowing all his lines and searching for the teleprompter as many people did um, resulted in the audience um, feeling differently about him than perhaps was intended and so there was this this you know great following that he had of you know of people that were devoted to him and not all was scared by him they cared they cared about him well right after Jonathan joined Dark Shadows and they they saw that there was something special about his character uh, and the way the audience reacted to it, and this included not only the young people, the you know, teenagers, college kids, but women in general, you know, found, found him sexy and found him mysterious. Uh, they, they realized that he, he was the, the key to publicize this show, to, to get it to the next level. And, and I, I was brought aboard about the same time. I was from, from some other shows that I was doing. And, and we started to create a, a campaign. Today we would call it a marketing campaign. Then it was a publicity campaign. And we, uh, we put out uh, you know, many, many news releases uh, ab about Jonathan and his character, focusing mostly on the character, uh, you know, and then trying to set up interviews for Jonathan on radio and on local television. Uh, he actually went, uh, ABC had a, the Dick Cavett show on then, and one of his first you know, network interviews was on the Dick Cavett show. It was a daytime show on ABC, and of course, they both knew each other, and they went on and they had a wonderful time together, you know, Dick and, and, and Jonathan. Uh, and, and Jonathan still couldn't grasp the fact that he had become an overnight star after many years trying to work in, 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 on stage in regional theater. He was suddenly a celebrity, and it was hard for him, like most celebrities, to really grasp that. My memory 
wasn't all that good, so I would have to um, Paul Parrot. My mother would go over the lines, or sometimes Jonathan would go over the lines with me, and I would remember them that way much better than, than reading them and remembering them. I don't feel like anyone ever felt that I upstaged them, which I think is uh, a problem sometimes with child actresses and actors. Um, I loved working with Jonathan, and especially off screen, because he would, I, was, I admired him, is what it was. Um, I respected him as an actor. and. Uh, I was impressed with working with him and people like Joan Bennett, who my mother constantly told me what a star she was. And I mean, not having ever seen her myself, but I respected her greatly for that too. We set up interviews for, for John uh, to, to make sure, you know, that he, first of all, that he got used to his celebrity status, that he got used to doing interviews. It's not, it's not easy to do. And then we decided that, hey, we, we, they, we were getting calls from a lot of stations, affiliates around the country, uh, who, who were noticing the fact that Dark Shadows were really bringing in large audiences for them. So the network decided, like, with, with Dan Curtis and, 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 so, and the other people involved with the show, hey, why not do a, a tour, a, a publicity tour around the country with, with uh, Jonathan? And uh, one of the first places I remember we went, and I went with him on this one, was to Atlanta, Georgia, to the affiliate there. And when we got there, uh, we, had, we had decided that, that Jonathan, this, this was hard for him to accept. He, he wanted to go as Jonathan Frid, and of course the stations wanted him as Barnabas Collins. The fans wanted him as Barnabas Collins. So it, it took a little convincing that we had to get him to change his clothes on the plane before we arrived at a destination. And to get into his, put on his cape, put on his fangs, and then we waited till the end, till everybody left the plane, and then we would bring him off. And the local affiliate would arrange for fans to be there at the airport, screaming fans, and of course for the local media to be there, television and reporters and photographers. So when we got off and he walked into the terminal, it was like mayhem. Uh, and, 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 you know, then he, they always had, he was there for two days mostly, sometimes three, and they would have uh, uh, dinners for him, cocktail receptions with, with station supporters, then they did a fan event, and all the time he had to be Barnabas Collins. Well, first of all, Jonathan was unlike any, uh, uh, was full of fun, uh, had a glint in his eye. Uh, I remember him saying, Jonathan, I say, how do you learn all those lines? How do you learn your lines? And actually, we had a, we'd have a discussion. Uh, I remember once in his dressing room about that. Uh, but, you know, he was not like, and, and, and he was, he was unlike any leading man. So. Dan had created this character that uh, was quite, uh, uh, you know, the women really liked uh, uh, Barnabas, and they, he liked, and he, he was, uh, I, I, I don't know, he, he just had a persona that, uh, that was just so right for that, uh, you know, uh, time, and he was so much of a gentleman, and never once. Never once do I recall him ever, uh, you know, saying anything or having an argument. I never had an argument. In fact, I, didn't, I never had an argument in the whole time I was doing Dark Shadows. Never had a, I don't recall having a disagreement unless it was with Henry, who was directing, or Leela, you know, because, oh, no, I think I ought to do this, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I never got, had to be bitten. Jonathan never bit me. I never was bitten. Um, I thought he was, was and is absolutely wonderful. I don't know how anybody could have been Barnabas Collins except for Jonathan Fred. Fred and he's such a well-trained actor, you know. I mean, he's such a, a, a stage actor. He's a, a wonderful actor. Jonathan made a great impact on me. I mean, I learned a lot from watching him. And. Uh, from I, if I wasn't in a scene, I, I would come in on days that I didn't even work to either be in the, um, in the booth with Henry and watch what the director was doing and see what was going to come up on camera three before camera three came up to see what the actor was doing to prepare. I think I saw 
Laura once. She was just getting ready to make an entrance and just didn't know. But she pulled the little lace out of her sleeves before she walked on. And then it made all the difference in her body language. It was just wonderful. And, and, and yeah, and watching Jonathan was, was a, a wonderful education. He was a nice, such a nice man. He was so nice to him. Jonathan Fred, he was so sweet. He was such a sweet man. And I, <laughs> you know, looking back on, on Jonathan, when I first started working with him, I was this cocky, cocky actor, and I thought, eh, hey, the guy doesn't know his lines, you know. <laughs> looking back on his work, he was phenomenal. I mean, when he overcame the lines and he got into those parts, he was brilliant. He was a great actor. And he was a technician. He could do it all. He was Shakespearean. He was classical. So, um... Yeah, I, I, I think he, he was a phenomenal talent. Good for Jonathan. Yeah. What we wrote. Plus, I knew um, John uh, Fred from Yale, and so did Joe. And I had dinner with him uh, when I found out he had the part. And we, we discussed the part. And. Uh, um, John said, don't write me spooky. He said, I'll, I'll add that. He said, I just did Dana Richard III, which I thought I was the most sympathetic Richard ever. And the reviews came out and said I was f the most frightening ever. He said, it just seems to sort of come out of me. I don't know why, but uh, I said, okay. So that was a big help. I mean, you know, and. Um, John didn't always know his lines uh, and paraphrased like mad, which would sometimes drive me crazy because I really struggled to get the line I thought right. And he would come out with something about 50 miles off, but it was fine because it all, he was, he was trying to grope for things to say. And somehow it came over as being, I don't know, sort of tormented and, and struggling with himself and uh, thoughtful. And um, it, it just worked. It worked for him. I always played him as a sensible man. Um, I guess I used my father as, uh, as a kind of an image, <laughs> of course he would have hysterics if he had been alive to see all this, but, and me to say that as a result, but uh, no, I tried to play him as an intelligent, uh, you know, uh, capable man, he just had this particular problem. Uh, he came from good family, there's nothing wrong with good family, I know it's a derogatory concept nowadays, but he was from good family, good stock healthy and um, intelligent. He just had this one little problem. So he dealt with these problems in the most intelligent way he could, in the most sensible way he could. And uh, so there was that side of him that was, that gave him, I thought, gave him strength and gave him uh, cause for, for being. And then, uh, then he, of course, he was vulnerable. He, he, he was passionate. Of course, forgetting the whole vampire part of it, he was passionate, and uh, and he had his loves, and and uh, uh, he, he had his hatred for the one who loved him. He couldn't, re he couldn't reciprocate. He couldn't respond to the witch's love, and that's why she gave him the the curse. The one thing that I had to play all the time was to cover covering up. I mean, I was I was playing the lie. I was like a politician, I was like, uh, you know, uh, any human being that has to cover up certain private aspects of his life that, that can't be known. And uh, so uh, I was playing that most consistently. I never played vampire, ever. I um, played him with human values um, without having, without giving any attention to uh, the, the strict rules of what a vampire should be. In fact, if I did, if I had done that, he probably would have come out a very dull, lifeless, bloodless creep.
You know, I ended up playing four characters on Dark Shadows. I played Maggie Evans, the waitress, in, in the present time. And then when I went back in time, I played Josette Dupre, and uh, that was in the 1790s, I believe. And then there was the governess, Rachel Drummond, and, and that was in the 1800s. And, uh, and then I played Lady Kitty Hampshire. And all four of these characters, they were very different, but they all were versions of um, the, the same core person. In other words, I was always the ingenue, it seemed, but I, but I was facing different kinds of jeopardy. And I think that most of the time, of course, I was being harassed by Angelique. Um, I seem always to be playing opposite Laura Parker in, in some version of my character. And um, uh, the roles, though, were, you know, slightly different, each one. For example, Lady Kitty Hampshire was a little bit more sophisticated. Rachel Drummond, of course, was a, a governess, a, a school marm. And um, Maggie Evans was sort of a fast-talking waitress in the present time. And um, uh, all of them, though, were essentially the same kind of character. You know, I was always the good girl on this show. I was always the fiancé of the vampire. I was always, oh, let's say the victim role. But, you know, it never, it never occurred to me until sometime later, you know, how much fun it would have been to play somebody that was the, uh, the meanie, you know, the, the villainous role. And I remember Laura Parker always talking about how she wanted to play the good girl until somebody pointed out that, you know, the, the, um, the heavy, the heavy character was always more fun. I love playing Maggie Evans. I love playing um, Rachel Drummond and, and Lady Kitty Hampshire. I, I don't think I ever really mm, lusted after, you know, one of the, the tougher characters. I can't, I'm trying to remember how all the relationships of everything, that Kathy Scott was the sort of town good girl or something hung around. She took care of the, she worked at the hotel, is that what it was? Yeah. And um, then... Um, um, people like uh, Catherine Lee Scott, I always thought she was beautiful. And uh, Laura Parker. Those were my impressions, again, of an eight-year-old, you know, from an eight-year-old's eye. Oh, the, it wasn't so much as running into people that you knew and had heard of from other things, no. Dan and his casting folks, they found them before anybody had heard of them, when they were the new kids. Laura Parker, I remember this. It was just great times. Catherine Lee Scott, who was a joy to work with. They don't come any better than Katie. But the whole unit was like that. Well, uh, when the show really took off, because Barnabas played the, the vampire who was guilty, the reluctant vampire, uh, they decided to go back in time and explain how he became a vampire. And they came up with really the pivotal story of the entire series, which was the triangle. And Barnabas was to begin with the son of a wealthy shipping magnet who seduced and abandoned a serving girl, a servant, and that was Angelique. He did not realize that she was a witch. He just dallied with her and then dismissed her. But she was not to be dismissed. She fell very deeply in love with him. He then became engaged to a proper young girl whom he loved very deeply, came from a fine family, Josette. She was an innocent. She was pure. And so you had a young man who had sort of played around, a soldier, shipping magnet, and he could not escape the uh, passion of this young servant girl who had fallen in love with him. And she was determined. She would not give up. She did everything in her power. And so that was the character I played, and it was very convoluted. She made all kinds. She cast spells. She put him in a position where he had to promise to marry her. He did, finally did marry her. She tortured Josette. But anyhow, you had this wonderful triangle between the witch, the innocent maiden, and the handsome young man who had made one mistake. Catherine Lee Scott. We remain friends to this day. She is just a, a sweetheart, a hard worker, a talented lady, someone who doesn't let things stop her. She was told she can't do something, she goes ahead and produces a movie. She was told she can't 
open a publishing company. She opens a publishing company. She's a very bright young lady, and, uh, and I have great respect for her. And um, I, 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 there, was, there was one little hint of it one, one time um, before that. They had done some shooting uh, early on uh, around the house, which turned out to be the old house. And Catherine Lee Scott had put a veil over her face and was running in and out of columns. And I just loved that. And I, I thought, this, this was my idea. I thought, can, can we please have a little spook? Can we, can we suggest, uh, I think it was a thing about Matthew threatening Vicky or something. Could we could we go to the old house and see this supernatural figure running in and out of the out of the uh, uh, columns? And we did, and it was wonderful. It was very liberating. One of the other really fun things about doing the show, and remember, I was on the very first day. I was in the original cast of Dark Shadows. Um, I suppose I thought that I would always be playing the Maggie Evans role. And then the really fun thing happened uh, when I ended up playing another character, and it came about by accident, the Josette Dupre role. Uh, it happened because I showed up at the studio one day, and and they were the the producer and the wardrobe woman um, were clothing this this clothes horse, this dummy, and and I said, w "What's this all about?" And they said, "Oh, well, this is this is the ghost of Josette Dupre, who uh, was the fiance of of the vampire of." of of Barnabas Collins, and they put wind machines on her, and and they did everything to animate this clothes dummy, and I thought it still looked like a clothes dummy, and I offered to step in for the clothes dummy, and so they put all of this on me: the the hair, the the lace costume, the um, you know the 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 makeup that made me look like I had jumped off Widow's Hill, and um, and when Dan Curtis saw that. Uh, it occurred to him that that maybe I should play the role of Josette. So I was the first one who actually played a, an, another character. And I remember everybody telling Dan that this wouldn't work, that the audience would be confused. And he said, no, they'll go along with it. So there I was, Maggie Evans in the present time, playing a parallel character in the 1790s, going back in time and, and playing Josette. And it was absolutely wonderful. And then we started doing that with all of the actors. And as new actors came on in a, in a particular character, like Quentin Collins with David Selby, you would, you would know that in a few months he would be playing a character like Quentin Collins, but only in a different time period. It kept the show very fresh for all of us. And it was really exciting to have this opportunity to develop several different characters over the run of the show. Uh, it was very exciting to create the first ghost that we had on Dark Shadows. Now, I hope I'm right with this, but it was the ghost of Josette. Uh, and there was a portrait of Josette over the fireplace in the old house. And the deal was, or at least the script said this, um, from the portrait of Josette, she arises from her seated position and walks out of the portrait, down off of the mantel, the portrait over the mantel, strolls through the house, out the front door, and then we see her, her image in a diaphanous gown blowing in the wind uh, around the porches of, and the columns outside the house of the old house. And that was our first big challenge, ghost challenge. To achieve uh, the scene of Josette coming out of her portrait, what we did is we had the old house with the mantle and the portrait over the mantle. Then we built another set in black with a ramp coming down. And we had Catherine sitting in a chair on the ramp, up just above the ramp. And she would come down the ramp, and we would superimpose that image uh, over the portrait in the old house. And then she would come down 
and it would look as though she were a ghost coming out of a painting. When Grayson Hall and, and Joel Crothers died, I was very close to both of them. And when they died in the same year, floods of memories came back. And I started writing a book called My Scrapbook Memories of Dark Shadows. And I knew I didn't want to publish it with a big company because it would only be on the, on the market for a couple of months. And, uh, and I knew how to reach that audience. So I decided to start a publishing company, publish the book myself, and the book did incredibly well. It was, it was picked up by a book club. It sold thousands and thousands of copies. And I decided to take the profits that I made and put it into the publishing company and start publishing books by other authors. So I've now published about 40 books and uh, on a variety of subjects, all nonfiction entertainment. And that book, the My Scrapbook Memories of Dark Shadows, was to celebrate the 20th anniversary. For the 25th anniversary, none of the other actors had written a, a book, so I asked them if they would contribute to the Dark Shadows Companion. And that was the 25th anniversary book. And then with the 1991 NBC primetime series, I asked Jim Pearson if he would write a book called Dark Shadows Resurrected. And now for the 30th anniversary, we're coming out with the almanac. I don't feel I have anything more personally to say about Dark Shadows. I think I said it in the first book, but everybody else, Cy Tomashoff, who designed the sets, and uh, Mary McKinley, who uh, designed the costumes for Dark Shadows, some of the fans, um, Laura Parker, David Selby, Marie Wallace, Donna Wandry, they've all contributed to the book. So that's what the, the almanac is, and it's being received very well.